Good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for coming tonight. We want to welcome all of you this evening. My name is Kimberly Barry. I'm the president of the Lawrence Teachers Union. I'm here with Suzanne. Hi, everyone. Thank you. My name is Suzanne Salamaris, and I am the president of the Lawrence Federation of Paraprofessionals. Thank you very much. Just a few logistics, um, bathrooms in the back, and um, we're here live tonight, and we have the LCTV, and we're very grateful that they're here broadcasting live on the Access Channel, as well as on Facebook Live. So we're sharing that on the Lawrence Teachers Union uh, Facebook as well. And we would just like to ask everybody to please leave your mask on in the audience, just for safety reasons. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, school committee member uh, Jonathan Guzman here, our elected official. Um, tonight, uh, we've reached out to Ms. Rodriguez, who was not able to attend the forum, but did reply to our questionnaire. And we also reached out to Mr. Lantigua, as well as Mr. DePena, and neither of them um, did either um, reply to our questionnaire, or um, they will not be attending tonight as well. So, we're very honored to welcome Mr. Kendris Vasquez, and uh, thank you very much, Kendris. And we're also happy to have Vilma Martinez Dominguez here tonight. Vilma, thanks so much for coming. We appreciate it. And our members are here, and the voters of Lawrence, and we're very interested in uh, getting to know more about your campaign, especially uh, what it means to students and educators in Lawrence. As we know, um, this is, means everything to us. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, what, this forum is part of the AFT Lawrence process to endorse a candidate for mayor. There are over 500 voting AFT members between the Lawrence um, teachers and the paraprofessional union. After tonight, we will ask all our members to review everything that they've learned about your candidacy and tell us who they would like to support as mayor. We will work vigorously to support the candidate who receives the most support from our membership. So much. So, without further ado, um, we have. Um, please welcome Mr. Kendra Vasquez as well as Ms. Vilma Martinez Dominguez. <laughs> By way of flipping a coin, Ms. Martinez Dominguez will give her opening statement first. I'm not used to. It. First of all, I'm too tall. <laughs> <laughs> and second of all, I just look forward to the day that we don't have to wear this mask anymore. So, because I'm horrible at keeping time, I'm a chatterbox, uh, I wrote some notes and I'm going to uh, share my thoughts with you and introduce myself. First of all, I want to say thank you uh, to the American Federation of Teachers for inviting us here tonight. I think that it gives us, gives us candidates the opportunity to actually talk about issues that are important, particularly around the public education of our kids. And so, and also those voters who are at home, uh, who are at home still making a decision on who should lead our city forward. Um, hopefully this will be, help them make that decision. So, I'm Vilma Martinez Dominguez. Many of you know me as Vilma Laura. I was Vilma Laura for a long time. And I'm running for mayor first and foremost because of the love of my city. I mean, this is the city that welcomed my family and I 30 years ago. This is where I've lived, raised my kids. My kids are now three adults. They went to the public school system. Uh, it's where uh, I have worked and worshiped and have dedicated my entire life to really working in the community and making sure that families in this community can thrive. So the aftermath of the gas explosion and now the pandemic, uh, two unprecedented things that really have left many of our families struggling with financial and housing stability. And we are working really hard to sustain our local economy and properly support our public school system as we continue to recover uh, from these horrific events. Our kids are attending a school system that's working very hard to improve their academic performance so that we can regain control of our school system. And, and a system that has been in receivership since 2012. I mean, it's been a while. And so we all know that the academic, the, the uh, pandemic actually brought up a lot of, uh, brought to bear a lot of disparities for our kids. It really changed and impacted the learning process. It changed their learning environment for them. And really, the, the digital divide became quite apparent, uh, more so than we anticipated. So as a mom of three kids who uh, are now adults, you know, who were raised in the school system, and I have a grandbaby, yes, I'm a grandma. <laughs> I have a grandbaby, and 
uh, my nieces and nephews are still attending the school system here, I am quite aware of the importance of, the, of the, our kids having really and deserving a high quality uh, education and, and that our families get the support that they need to make sure that they can support their children and so they can uh, uh, academically uh, prosper. Lawrence needs a leader with integrity, someone who understands our challenges and opportunities, and someone who, has, who can build on the progress and the partnerships that we have built together over the years. And these things that we have, been, we have built over the years have benefited our residents, our families, our children, and really have uh, positioned Lawrence really well for uh, new opportunities and resources. So our city needs someone with my experience, my commitment, my track record, and my passion to move our city forward. It would be an absolute honor to be able to lead the city forward as your next mayor. Thank you very much. Do we have any time left to speak in Spanish? Yes, one minute. Okay. So, solamente quiero darle las gracias a la, a la Federación de Americana de, de Profesores por esta invitación. Creo que nos da la oportunidad a los candidatos de venir aquí y de tener la oportunidad de compartir nuestra visión y que las personas que todavía están pensando con quién, por quién van a votar y quién debe ser la persona que lleve a nuestra ciudad hacia adelante tengan una mejor idea hoy. Creo que nosotros como sistema escolar tenemos muchos eh, retos. Mis hijos fueron a la escuela, mi, mi nieta va a al sistema escolar. Yo entiendo la necesidad grande que existe que nuestros estudiantes tengan una educación de alta calidad y que nuestros padres tengan el apoyo que ellos necesitan para que sus hijos puedan tener éxito en este sistema escolar. Así que yo espero, como madre, como persona que ha estado trabajando en esta comunidad por casi 30 años, que me den la oportunidad para nosotros, necesitamos un líder con integridad que pueda llevar a nuestra ciudad hacia adelante, hacia su nueva etapa, y será un orgullo, un honor, ser, servir como su nueva alcaldesa. Muchísimas gracias. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to come here before you today to present my vision as to why I wish to continue to serve for a full term as mayor of the city of Lawrence. My name is Candidis Vasquez, and I am the current mayor of Lawrence, and I hit the ground running the moment that I was sworn in. It was important for me to ensure that we tackle the COVID pandemic as we continued actually to recover from the Columbia gas explosions in 2018. I am a product of the Lawrence Public School System, and I am a proud Lancer. I graduated. I graduated Lawrence High in 2004. 2014, no, 2004. And interestingly enough, I think that you know, understanding that on the receivership, Lawrence High School continues to be under the bottom 50% of all schools in Massachusetts means that it is time to end receivership. That's why I am Lawrence for Mayor, because our students, our educators, and our parents deserve to be represented by the elected body the Lawrence School Committee. And I am proud to say that a majority of the Lawrence School Committee members have already endorsed Candace Vasquez for mayor because they've seen the fight that we are pushing to ensure that we regain control of our schools. Thank you. Mi nombre es Candace Vasquez. Quiero dar las gracias primero que nada a todos los que están acá, especialmente a los maestros por darme la oportunidad de presentar mi visión para la ciudad de Lawrence. Como su alcalde, Cuando asumí mi rol, le di corriendo, porque entendí que teníamos que continuar una lucha firme para poder vacunar la mayoría de nuestras personas en la ciudad. Pero no solamente eso, continuar con la recuperación de las explosiones que tuvimos de gas en el 2018. Yo soy producto de las escuelas públicas de Lawrence y soy orgullosamente un Lancer. Me gradué de las escuelas superior de Lawrence en el año 2004. Por esa razón, no es justo que todavía la Escuela Superior de Lawrence se encuentre en las peores escuelas, incluyendo 50% abajo de todas las escuelas superiores del estado de Massachusetts. Y por eso es que firmemente digo que es tiempo de terminar con el receivership. It is time to end receivership. Y por eso es que estoy corriendo para alcalde. Porque creo firmemente que nuestros estudiantes, nuestros educadores, nuestros padres y la, la nuestra comunidad en general 
merece poder trabajar junto con el cuerpo electo del comité escolar, quien de por sí, por su mayoría, ya me han brindado su apoyo porque entienden que somos el mejor candidato para rescatar las escuelas públicas de Lomas. Muchas gracias. Jesse Dimmick. I'm a resident of Lawrence and also a teacher at Up Academy Oliver um, Middle School in Lawrence. Um, and I am curious, as mayor, you will have to navigate the city council, the school committee, the receivership board, and many different city departments. Describe what kind of leader you will be as you interact with these different groups. Thank you very much for that question. I greatly appreciate it. So, one thing that is important for you to know about me is that I have been serving the city of Lawrence for almost a decade as an elected official. I started serving the city as counselor for this receipt. I moved on to later become the chairman of the Budget and Finance Committee and eventually became the Lawrence City Council President. Why do I say this? I say it because that clearly shows that I have the leadership skills to rise to the occasion, and I became mayor after the departure of the former mayor, and I have been able to collaborate among the different leadership styles. Way, I mean, many of you have been to our city council meetings. You can clearly see how those meetings are, and I am proud to say that when I led those meetings and those efforts, everything went smooth, respectful, and in a format that is appropriate. I am here to follow guidelines stated by our city charter, which is what I will continue to do. I have reinstated school committee meetings, and that's the leadership style that you will get out of your mayor. I have reinstated school committee meetings because I believe that the elected school committee members deserve to have a voice at the table. I have encouraged the, you know, the LAE to have joint meetings with our elected school committee meetings because I think it is important that we transition immediately out of receivership. Additionally, I have had continuous communications with the superintendent about my positions and I have done it in a very respectful manner and that's something that I will continue to do and advocate for. One thing that is important to highlight is that when I have to stand up to defend my city and defend our educators, I will do so with a firm position. And I already proven myself doing so. When Michael Moriarty, a chair, a, a member of the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, disrespected our community, not just the student population, not just the educators, but the community as a whole. And I immediately stood up and asked for his resignation. That is the type of leadership style that I will bring, continue to show, to give you when you elect me as your mayor for a full term. Es importante que vean mi historia, a donde he estado, para poder entender el, el tipo de liderazgo que yo traigo. Yo fui concejal por el Distrito C. Fui luego presidente del Comité de Finanzas de la Ciudad de Lawrence. De ahí paso a ser el presidente del Consejo Municipal y eventualmente su alcalde en la ciudad. Eso es una muestra de que tenemos el liderazgo apropiado para poder hacer las cosas correctas en nuestra ciudad y poder trabajar con los diferentes grupos de personas con variedad de opiniones diversas. Lo hemos hecho de una forma respetuosa, pero firme a la misma vez. Hemos reintegrado las reuniones del Comité Escolar porque considero que es importante que estas puedan suceder. Y de esa forma también he expresado que el LI, la junta que está actualmente en función académica para las, las escuelas públicas, tiene que integrar a los miembros electos del comité escolar inmediatamente. Y ya lo he dicho de forma pública. También le he comunicado a nuestra superintendente mis posiciones acerca de esto. Por esas razones... Ustedes se han dado cuenta que cuando nos faltaron respeto, no solamente a los estudiantes y los educadores, pero a la comunidad en general, 
me paré firmemente a pedir la renuncia del señor Michael Moriarty de la Junta de Educación Elemental y Secundaria del Estado de Massachusetts. Ese es el tipo de liderazgo que ustedes van a tener. Un liderazgo firme y preciso, especialmente en los momentos más necesitados. Ustedes me han probado, ahí vamos. Gracias. As an activist that I've been for close to 30 years, my style is mobilizing. That's my style. Everything I have done has, been, has not been done in silo. Everything I have done has always been in, done in collaboration. Uh, based, the decisions have been made by consensus. And I have been able, even though I have not held a position within the city government yet, I have worked with four different administrations. I was a consultant for the city for a long time. Uh, actually, I co-founded the Mayor's Health Task Force, which is a coalition that addresses health equity and has worked a lot with the school department in, many, in so many ways. You know, as, as far as addressing homelessness, as far as addressing food insecurity, as far as addressing, you know, housing insecurity and uh, youth leadership, we've done a lot of work together. As far as adolescent health and working with our families, I've been able to do that. Everything I do in life be it as an activist working at the YWCA for close to 25 years, working with families who were dealing with, with uh, domestic violence and sexual violence and abuse and people who were uninsured. It did not take just Vilma. It took a sea of people. And when you bring a lot of people to the table and those in, you engage them in the process and decisions are made, regardless of what that decision is, it's done in consensus, it's done collectively, and what happens with that is there's buy-in. And so you're doing grass up, you know, grassroots and, 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 and grass top. I think that that's the kind of leadership that I have demonstrated. I'm a mobilizer, I'm a mentor. I like to bring people along with me, and those are the conversations that need to happen, including with the school department. And so, yes, the receivership needs to go. We understand that. It's been a long time. And there's a lot of, yes, yes, I'm so But we need to do certain things. And as a district, we need to be ready. We need to be ready to be able to regain, once we regain control of our schools, and once we were able to have you know, uh, a sustainability plan, that we have people trained, that our school committee is ready and equipped, and that we, we have things in place in a way that we don't have to go back. Because we need to make sure that we change the status quo. And let's not forget that Lawrence is in the position that's in because of what's going on, because of the demographics. We're a community that has a lot of challenges. We, this is an urban school. We have a population that really, I mean, seven square miles, and we have close to, ni to 90,000, we know it's more than that. So we have our own challenges. We know that the, the, the teachers also need a, a, a dignifying salary and every staff that's there. And so I think that there's a lot of things, but those information, I cannot come in here and say I'm gonna do A, B, and C because I'm not in that chair yet. But once I'm in that chair, I wanna have conversations because it's by talking to people and by hearing about what are some of the challenges and what are some of the ideas that you bring to the table and what else is happening in other communities that could work here because I believe in best practices. We can move the city forward, but we need to be ready to take that back. And for that, we need to be able to be trained. And now the Student Opportunity Act gives us a great opportunity right now. $64 million over three years. Let's put it to work so that we can start closing that achievement gap and addressing the disparities that we need to address so that we can actually be in a position to take our schools back. So that's the kind of leader you're gonna get feisty. I am feisty, I am an advocate. I've walked the streets in a wedding dress against domestic violence. I have done a lot of things in this community and I'm not ashamed to do the rest for our community and for our public school system because my grandbabies deserve it. My nieces and nephews deserve it. Your children deserve it. And that's what I want to do. That. And this is the type of leadership that you're going to have in me. A leadership that comes from collaboration, from mobilization, from conversations, where the decisions that you take are decisions that are with a consensus, that are with the people, the voice of the people. Because when you do it like this, and decisions that are taken like this, they are sustained because the people want it, and this is part of the change, it's part of the plan. That's what I would like for my people. Thank you.
major problem that has been happening through the school being under the state control are failure with the food system, school day longer with no new activities to do, lack of after school activities, and a lack of preparation for what's after school, meaning life, job, and college. And most important, the decisions that are being taken don't include the students' opinions. What do you think you can do better if the school are under your control? And how will you include students' voice in decision making if you were mayor? Thank you for your question because there's one thing what you hear, there's one thing that what's being planned, and that that's the reality, right? And so, uh, thank you for sharing that, because I think one of the things I have always said is that how come we don't have really a strong mentorship or internship program? We have tried. I know that the Working Families, uh, the Lawrence Working Families program tried that. Uh, it worked for a while and it ran out of funds. And obviously, we have a lot of youth in our school system. Uh, the Lawrence Youth Council, I don't know how many of you remember it, but it's something that we established in 2014 and, and you know, we ran out of funds, unfortunately, but it's something that we can revisit again. The Lawrence Youth Council was really unique because it actually provided students with the opportunity to get some leadership skills, learn about health equity and social justice, and actually lead their team over a course of eight months. I mean, yeah, because usually it's students are at, over the course of eight months. And they actually took leadership. They actually picked, uh, uh, conducted surveys and did a whole bunch of different things. And got a stipend. And they were happy, but it was about what they were exposed to. I mean, they were exposed to Dana Farber. We took them to Dana Farber Cancer Institute for a day so that they can see people of color that look like them, that are doctors, that are you know uh, nurses, that are cardiologists. That, I mean, that was just an example, it was a nugget. But through our program, we had probably about close to 50 students over the course of four years. We need to do all that, we need to amplify that. And I've been trying to push that through the Mayor's Health Task Force, but we hit walls. Because I think the conversations between our, you know, the, the, the school district and the community and the administration need to strengthen. And we need to make sure that our vision is the same. So I absolutely hear you. Another reason why we think that we're spending so much money, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the community development director for the city. And this is something that we have talked about. And we have used federal funds to actually support nonprofit organizations that are supporting our students and are employing our students. We do that, but it's not enough. So we should really explore what other sources of funding exist how can we align those sources of funding and programs together? And how can we actually create, within, we have an amazing business community. Why can we tap into our business community to create these opportunities for our youth? But it takes a vision, it takes the, the same thing I said earlier, collaboration and connection. The other thing we have been doing is our open spaces. Did you know that Morris has over 45 open spaces and parks? And so I have devoted a lot of time and our resources and have applied for funds to make sure that we are, we are actually uh, rehabbing or doing construction around the parks. You've seen the one in South, and you've seen that it has a roof structure. Believe me, I fought with that neighborhood association that did not want that there. But I know that our, there's a lot of kids and young people and, and young men who like to play sports. And I love it when I go by there, by there and it's packed. I think we need to continue to do that. I don't think it's just one thing. I think we need to make sure that we expand. And the most important thing is that we expand not with a missionary vision, right? Where we think, oh, I'm going to save the world. No. We need to employ a visionary vision where you say, okay, what is it that you need? What makes sense for you, you as a student? And the last thing I want to say about engagement, I know that someone, she, uh, we mentioned something about engagement. I was under the impression that there are groups within the school that actually organize, and they are students, led by students. If that's not the case, then let's look at it. And is it inclusive of all students? Because that's the other piece. So that's some of the things that I want to say. I don't have 30 seconds. I won't, I won't be able to say much in Spanish. But I think it's important that we believe in programs of mentoring and internships, or programs of opportunities and voluntary for our students. Because we have a community of negocios allá afuera bastante grande, que puede darle plazas y espacios, sin tener que, la ciudad tiene que estar pagando por esos por eso tipos de, de, de oportunidades. Vamos a invertir en nuestra juventud. Los parques y todas las cosas que hemos hecho, también lo han hecho con, esas, con ese pensar. Gracias.
Uh, to the student, thank you very much for the question. Uh, just like yourself, I would come and answer. And when I was in school, it was, the, we had tremendous opportunities to actually expand our horizons. And I think that's something that is necessary and something that should be brought back. Because of those opportunities, I actually had uh, a full scholarship ride to Merrimack College, where I received my double degree. Yes. In communication studies and political science. I participated in the Accept the Challenge program, a program that was designated to attract individuals that were new arrivals to the United States that did not speak the language, but will ensure that we will have an equal opportunity like the rest of the student body. I immediately joined the group and understood that it will bring me options to visualize what I would want in my future. And that's what I want for the students in the city of Arms. I want us to bring back, accept the challenge. I want us to bring back strong upper bound programs. I want us to bring back, yes. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that we talk to those colleges, universities, and outside sources that already exist. And that's what I already started doing. I already started visiting colleges and universities in the area, and I am proud to say that they are interested in investing back in our youth. I am proud to say that they are willing to say I am proud to say that we started the conversation, and we will achieve what we are aiming to do which is to provide good internship programs for our students. It's a program that we're starting strong in Lawrence, and we will aim high to deliver for our students. With the school uh, committee, once we take, once we, we get receivership out of here, the school committee will work closely with me to empower our student body, because they deserve to be empowered today. Again, I am the only candidate that is saying that we are ready. I'm not saying that we need to get ready to end receivership. I'm saying today we are ready to end receivership and empower our student body. I'm the only candidate is openly saying that we're ready today. Receivership won't allow us to empower the student body. We need to get rid of it in order to do it. So that's where we start. Yo soy producto de las escuelas públicas y me gradué en Lawrence High School y tuve la oportunidad de participar en un programa que me dio la oportunidad de obtener doble licenciatura en ciencias políticas y comunicación social a través del programa Accept the Challenge o Aceptando el Reto. Ese tipo de programa es el que tenemos que regresar aquí para que jóvenes podamos estudiar en universidades becados, sin tener que preocuparnos por los altos costos de educación. Tener oportunidades para viajar a otras ciudades y conocer y expandir nuestros conocimientos. Tenemos que traer programas fuertes del Overbound de regreso. Y para lograr eso, hemos estado trabajando ya, haciendo visitas a las diferentes universidades, hablando con sus presidentes y dejándoles saber de que Lawrence necesita que ellos regresen aquí. Tenemos que salir del receivership. Y soy el único candidato que está diciendo que Lorenz está listo. No estoy diciendo que debemos de prepararnos. Estoy diciendo que ya estamos listos para empoderar a nuestros jóvenes y estudiantes ahora. I'm a ninth grade English teacher at the high school and also a resident of Lawrence. The American Federation of Teachers, our parent union, sorry, our parent organization, has long supported community driven unionism, a model in which unions work with community allies to advance the common good. What do you see as the role of teacher unions in relation to the needs of students, families, and communities? And how will you approach your relationship with the three AFT unions in Lawrence, which together represent our teachers, 
paraprofessionals, and school clerks. I am very proud to say that I am, I have been a union youth organizer. I organized for 509, local 509 at CIU, when I used to work at Class Incorporated. So I know what it means to organize, I know what it means to be a union member. As your mayor, I believe my role among union members is to ensure that we have respectful negotiations where we can give you what you deserve. Because I strongly and firmly believe that what you deserve will transition to delivering to the student population. So, so far, my relationship with all of the three unions have been very amicable. We have been working very closely in different projects, ensuring that you know we have access to do the uh, school committee meetings. And I thank you for the support that has been provided in reinstating that. Not only that, I also wish to say thank you for joining me in the effort in asking uh, Michael Moriarty for his resignation, because we did that together, right? And that's what I'm about. I'm about working with each of you. And I wish to highlight the fact that when you needed me to get vaccinated, I went against orders that were established by the state. And I worked closely with the union to ensure that not just educators, but all employees of Lawrence Public Schools had access to the vaccine without an appointment. Keep in mind, the state wasn't ready, but in Lawrence I understood that our union members were ready for it, and I delivered. That's the leadership you get by working with a person that understands unions that have been an organizer, has been a union member. I respect you, I admire the work you do, and we will continue to work closely together. Yo soy la persona que estuvo organizando para la local. Yo tuve la oportunidad de organizar para la local 509 de SEIU en Class Incorporated cuando fui su empleado. Eso significa que sé qué significa ser un miembro de una unión y que es momento de que nosotros tratemos a los miembros de la unión con respeto y dignidad para darle lo que ellos justamente se merecen cuando estemos haciendo negociaciones. Porque cuando hagamos buenas negociaciones, nosotros le, le damos a ustedes, ustedes como resultado, le van a dar a nuestros estudiantes en torno. Para mí es un placer decir que la relación que he tenido con las tres uniones hasta el momento ha sido una muy placentera. Colectivamente, hemos podido asegurar que nuestros comités escolar de Lawrence, que es el grupo electo, ha podido resumir sus reuniones de forma específica. Especialmente cuando no nos querían proveer recursos para nosotros tener ni siquiera una secretaria que tomara la minuta. Aparte de eso, hemos podido juntos luchar para pedir la resignación del señor Michael Moriarty cuando faltó el respeto a toda nuestra comunidad. Ese es el alcalde que ustedes tienen, que entiende el valor de tener uniones en la ciudad de Lawrence. That's the type of mayor that you get here in the city of Lawrence, a person that values and respects union members, that it's open and willing to have fair negotiations, because that is, that is what you deserve. Un alcalde que está dispuesto a tener negociaciones justas porque eso es lo que ustedes se merecen. Thank you. Gracias. Okay, so obviously the role of labor unions is key. It's critical. It makes sure that you negotiate a living wage, a salary that's dignified, that you have access to the benefits that you deserve. But you also have the opportunity to be heard as a body. Not as individuals or union members, but as a body of union members. And so definitely something that I, it's not going to change. There's several unions within the city. And not only with union, but with anybody. The way that I, I, I operate, the way that I, I collaborate, and I've done that, and that's the only way to get anything done, is by having conversations. 
And so obviously, you know, having great negotiation skills, sitting at the table, having active listening skills, and also looking at the budget and making sure that when budget decisions are being made, that they support your salary increases, that they support the benefits that you deserve. And, and that communication lines are open back and forth because there's no other way to get anything done. Engagement. I saw uh, the union uh, being involved in the Essex Street, Imagina Essex event. And then I saw you in uh, some park cleanup. What an amazing way to get engaged. There's like, there were like 500 events this weekend. <laughs> Like, you can have an, an opportunity to engage, to socialize, to connect with the community, and that includes the parents of the children of the, of the public school system. So it's a great way. Why do you think community policing works? It's because it creates that connection between two people. Um, respectful negotiation goes without saying. But also, I don't know if you know that a couple of years ago, we started a first time home buyer program for teachers and prior professionals. And we extend that opportunity so that it's a way for us to look at retention. How do we retain talent? So housing is a major issue. And so we started to do that. We were able to assist um, not as many as we wish with that particular project because what we ended up doing was increasing the income eligibility so that teachers could actually be eligible for it. And then we also offered our the regular first time we'll buyer program. That's one way that it doesn't necessarily need to be involved in the negotiations with a union, but we understand that by doing this, we are helping to retain the talent that we need to have. Having respectful negotiations and conversations should go without saying. Just because you're a union, or a person that comes up the street, or a parent, doesn't mean that you should not be treated with dignity, with respect, and that you should have a conversation, that conversation should go back and forth. And so, I was looking at the average salary, and the average, and, and I'm gonna take a couple of minutes for this, I may not be able to translate it to Spanish, but it takes about $36 an hour to afford a two bedroom apartment. Living wage for a single person is $17.74, and if you're a parent with two children, with two adults working, 3472. How many of our parents, how many of our teachers, maybe our teachers that have been there for a little bit, yes, but not the ones that are starting, and definitely not our power professionals. Because that I know. Because I work with Lawrence Community Works and the working families to make sure that that program that you see for the power professional exists within us our, within our, our, our um, community. So bas in the seed, no no falta no vale ni la pena decir que, que vamos a negociar de manera respetuosa. Porque en realidad Debe haber respeto, no importa si usted es miembro de una, de una eh, unión, o si es una persona, o si es un padre, o sea quien sea. Porque el derecho de nosotros, lo que ustedes están pagando es los taxes para que nosotros nos paguen para estar en esta posición. Entonces debemos tratar a todo el que requiera información o, o necesite un recurso de la misma manera. Y hemos tenido muchísimos programas que aunque yo no esté dentro del sistema escolar, los he empujado, que fue el programa de para profesionales y también fue el programa de primeros compradores para los profesores, porque sabemos que vivienda es lo que nos ayuda a retener el, el talento localmente. Gracias. Um, hello, my name is Julio Ramos. I'm part of the Paraprofessional Union. Um, I work at the SES and I'm also a coach at uh, Lawrence High School. The school closures has caused by the pandemic exposed, uh, exposed many inequalities among staff, students, and families. The city invested millions of dollars to help ensure staff and every student had technology use. What will you do as mayor to assist students and families to make sure that they have modern technologies and access to the internet. Some of that work has started. Actually, uh, in the previous administration, we realized that there wasn't enough funding, and I know that initially there was a computer given to a, a family, and eventually we realized that that was not enough. And so I remember working uh, with the administration, and I remember spending, you know, setting aside a million dollars for laptops. That's great. There's laptops. But now we're looking at, okay, so not everybody has access to internet. And so we have continued to work, even though I'm not within the school system, with the Essex County Community Foundation, you know, with Lawrence Partnership, and I know there have been, and the Lawrence Public Library, and there have been some, um, some progress made. 
They have been funding now that there's hot, hot spots available at the library that the students can actually get it. Well, how can we expand? And I think ARPA, the American Rescue Plan, has an opportunity for us to look at the broadband. And so we should really look at it. Now it's 200 pages of regulation, but we should look into it because this could be an opportunity. Lawrence is seeing an investment and an amount of money being funneled down the pipes right now. It is very important that the person that's leading understands those funds and that we can actually work with you and work with the families to figure out where are the needs here as far as technology is concerned. Where are the needs? And how can we continue to improve? I have had the opportunity to travel all over the United States with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. I was part of the national effort. And I was able to see, particularly in San Antonio, Texas, where they have actual places with this free broadband. Downtown, businesses, library. Let's look like that. Let's look at that. Let's not limit ourselves. And I think that's the other thing that we need to do. So some of that work is happening, and we will continue, and I'm committed to continue to make sure that the students and the parents and the teachers have the resources and the tools needed to be successful. That's what I would do. So, hemos visto que hubo en el tiempo de COVID, que donde se dieron, eh, notamos que la, el sistema escolar le dio una computadora a cada familia. No es bastante, nos dimos cuenta de eso. Pues entonces de eso, en la, en la administración anterior, se, se separó y se designó un millón de dólares para eso mismo, para apoyar. Y inclusive tuvimos que re, 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 pedir el reembolso por medio de FIMA y misma para ese dinero. Para eso se hizo. Ahora nos dimos cuenta después que no había internet y que muchos de los estudiantes no tenían acceso a internet. Hemos continuado trabajando con diferentes organizaciones y ahora mismo en la biblioteca hay varios hotspots, lo que dicen hotspots, que es para que usted pueda tomarlo prestado y tener acceso a internet en su casa, en su computadora. He tenido la oportunidad de viajar por todos los Estados Unidos como parte de una organización nacional llamada Robert Wood Johnson. Y en San Antonio, Texas, tienen un tremendo modelo donde hay varios eh, eh, lugares donde hay free broadband, o sea, free internet. Y eso es en la biblioteca, en downtown, en muchísimos lugares. ¿Por qué nosotros tenemos que limitarnos a no tener ese internet? Vamos a pensar en grande. Y ahora mismo Lawrence está recibiendo una cantidad de dinero a través del de, de, plan de rescate eh, estadounidense. Y vamos a ver ese dinero, cómo se utiliza de una manera que haga un impacto y que llene las necesidades de nuestra comunidad, principalmente de nuestros estudiantes, de nuestros profesores y de nuestros padres. Así que vamos a continuar trabajando y ese es mi compromiso con ustedes. Muchísimas gracias. The digital divide was clear during this pandemic. We felt it. We sigh, we know we exist. And I am proud of the work that the former mayor did to ensure that people had access to a computer. However, I think a lot more needs to be done. And that's why my administration, in the last eight months, we have been working to ensure that we have access to free Wi-Fi in the city. And this is something that we will be doing. Why, if I already started, change halfway to start the conversation all over again? We are already working in this process. So I think that it's important that our community has access to free Wi-Fi, especially those that do not have access to reliable internet at home, whether that is in you know, public parks or anywhere you are. I think it's necessary. And that's something that we are already working on now. So why start the process all over again? If you give me the opportunity to continue as your mayor for the next four years, we will accomplish it. We won't reinvent the wheel. We won't start all over again, you know, come November you know, 3rd. Let's not do that. Let's not waste time. It's important that we get things done as soon as possible. We cannot continue with the digital divide. COVID a nosotros nos mostró que tenemos una división digital muy grande en nuestra comunidad. Inmediatamente, le agradezco a la administración anterior por el trabajo que hizo para darle accesibilidad a un computador a nuestros estudiantes. Pero tenemos también que darle acceso que sea reliable a el Internet. Ya mi administración está trabajando para poder hacer eso. Entonces, ¿por qué tenemos que esperar a una administración nueva y parar el trabajo que ya hemos logrado, que estamos haciendo, para que eso se haga lo más pronto posible? No nos pongamos a reinventar cuando ya nosotros estamos trabajando para lograr eso de forma rápida. 
Lawrence merece que nos movamos con prontitud y que hagamos inversiones ahora. No esperemos que pasen las elecciones después de noviembre para reiniciar ese diálogo. Las cosas están pasando ahora. Estamos trabajando bien. Vamos a continuar en el camino que vamos. Gracias. I'm the paraprofessional union rep and the paraprofessional um, treasurer. I'll keep naming the stuff that I did, but we'll be here all night. <laughs> I'm the one of school. Um, so the question is, so it says, safe schools and ending the school to prison pipeline are not mutually exclusive. What ideas do you have to promote safe schools and prevent unnecessary student disciplinary actions? This is a beautiful question, thank you. I strongly and firmly agree with you. We need to stop this now. We can no longer criminalize our students and our youth in the city of Barnes. We need to provide them opportunities today. And I'll quickly share a story about, very personal story. I have a cousin who had a strong passion for music. And because of his passion, he got arrested and eventually was deported. How did that come about? Because of his passion, he had to find a studio in which he could record his music. This studio was in a basement. Eventually, he was asked to pay back. But what did that mean? What did it entail? It meant, hey, there's this little bag that you're supposed to distribute that's payback. He got caught, arrested, and deported. Let's not criminalize our students and our youth because they have dreams and aspirations. Right? How? How am I going to address this? We have one thing that I am going to do, you know, as soon as I am elected for a full term. We're going to revitalize our public library. Let's create that studio. Let's allow people, our students and our youth, to learn about coding and understand that if you have a passion for Fortnite, yeah, you can play the video game. But you know what? Let's also show you how the video games are made. Let's have instructors there that can guide you in the proper way. And that way, there won't be any paybacks. That way, you will not be arrested, but rather, you could become the next big developer. You could become the next big artist. You could become the next big athlete. That's how we will address the criminalization of our students. By providing them those options here. Because they deserve it now. La pregunta se trataba de la criminalización que existe en muchos de los estudiantes. Y es algo que yo creo que es importantísimo que lo hablemos de forma abierta. Brevemente contaré una historia de un primo mío que tenía una pasión de la música y por su pasión terminó preso y luego deportado. ¿Cómo sucede esto? Bueno, él estaba siguiendo su pasión de grabar. Encontró personas que tenían estudios de grabaciones y esta persona entonces luego le dice es tiempo de que tú comiences a pagar y ya tú sabes. Tuvo que pagar el favor y empezó a vender droga. Lo mete en preso y eventualmente es deportado. ¿Por qué? Porque estaba siguiendo su pasión, una aspiración que él tenía de convertirse en un gran artista. Y adivina qué, no podemos continuar haciendo eso. Tenemos que darle oportunidades a nuestros jóvenes, a nuestros estudiantes, que si usted tiene una pasión a seguir, ya sea la música, los videojuegos, el deporte, o cualquier que sea esta, la ciudad esté preparada. ¿Dónde nos prepararemos? En nuestra biblioteca pública en el momento que ustedes me elijan una vez más. Y tener allí estudios musicales para que nuestros jóvenes puedan grabar. Tener allí 
espacios que si usted quiere jugar un videojuego, venga y juegue, pero a la misma vez tener instructores que puedan enseñarte cómo hacer la codificación y que tú te puedas convertir en el próximo gran creador de un videojuego, o un gran artista, o un mejor deportista. Tenemos que dar esas oportunidades en nuestra ciudad para terminar lo que es la criminalización de nuestros estudiantes. Gracias. I remember being here, I think it was last year, at the Lawrence High School, actually, um, where there was a lot of concerns over public safety within the school. It was a very difficult thing to sit through. Um, I saw parents being very angry. I saw teachers being very angry. I saw students being very angry. And the administration really was, I mean, they were in shock, because I couldn't read body language. Um, this is a real thing. We already know that there's a clear pipeline to jails for black and brown kids, particularly our, our boys. And so how do we fix this situation? Well, some work has started. So the community policing component, and now the construction of a new police department that's gonna have a very nice conference room, and it's gonna be a community room, where they're gonna, people are gonna be able to use that space for community events. Create one step, one bridge, where that could happen. There are programs where there's youth leadership. Then you have a police who does the, the um, I don't remember the name of the program, but it's basically for to engage youth in uh, potentially becoming police officers in the future. There's things that happen. We have a ton of organizations in this community that are doing all kinds of things, from leagues to arts and culture to you know spoken word to theater. To, I mean, there's so much. We can also tap into that and create a hub and a network where those resources are shared with our parents. I can tell you one thing, the mayor mentioned something that happened to, to, um, to his family member. And I remember when my son went to third grade at the Partham School, he got beat up, like literally beat up on the ground. They literally almost cracked open his head. Two kids were sixth graders. And I spoke to the parent, I mean to the teachers, and they're like, you know, it's older kids, you know, it, you know we can fix this internal lesson, no. I want the parents of these kids to be called. I want the police to come in, and I want us to have our, con our conversation. And the parents went in, and the parents were upset that their own kids had done that. And we were able to work with the parents, and by, this, by the end of that, that school year, they were friends. So that means we need to engage also our parents. We need to figure out how to get them engaged. And the other thing is restorative justice. Everybody talks about that. Let's really do that work. Let's actually do that work and actually talk to the parents and figure out what are those issues that are really making it very difficult to parents to parent and support them, support them. Instead of penalizing our children, let's support them in the process. And so I wanna be able to do that, but I'm not gonna come here with a list of things because as I told you, I'm a mobilizer. I am a person that likes to have conversations and based on what you say and what we come up with ideas, then we execute. I think that's the best way, because I don't wanna come up here and pretend that I know it all and that I'm going to make it so much better for other parents, because I don't, I don't have that information, but I need it from you. So, lo que quería decir es en cuanto a esto de la, de la criminalidad, criminalizando a nuestros estudiantes, es que tenemos ya cosas que están en su lugar. El programa de, de policía comunitaria está creciendo. Esos programas ofrecen varias oportunidades para nuestros jóvenes. Vamos a, a, a crear ma, mayor conexiones con ellos, como también hay muchísimas organizaciones aquí en la comunidad que ofrecen una cantidad diferente de oportunidades para nuestros jóvenes. Vamos a coordinarlo bien y vamos a utilizar el poder de la comunidad para nosotros también, porque dicen que Texas Village con una, una, una villa completa para crear un niño. Eso es lo que eso significa. Nosotros tenemos que buscar a todo el mundo, que todo el mundo sea parte de esto. Y yo no voy a pretender que yo me lo sé todo y que yo voy a venir con un, una vez más con una visión misionaria donde yo voy a arreglar el problema. No. Yo quiero escuchar a ustedes, los padres, para poder tomar unas decisiones y tomar los primeros pasos. Gracias. Thanks for coming tonight. My name is Jenna Farraher. I am a proud Lawrence Lancers alumni, class of 2009, and I'm a very proud citizen of this city. Thank you. 
I am also an associate teacher at the Spark Academy down the street. And the question we have for you today, and part of this was answered earlier, but I still am going to ask both parts to both candidates. So as you know, the Lawrence Public Schools were put into receivership by the state in 2011. Regardless of whether you believe receivership was justified or not initially, on what basis do you believe the decision to end receivership should be made? And do you believe we've reached that point now where receivership should end? Receivership since 2012. 2015, you got an update. You got a plan. 2018, there was another plan. I just saw a summary of what are the things that they still need to work on. And I think that what's missing here, it's a clear, concise plan that says, instead of saying these are the benchmarks, these are the things that need to happen. And in 2022 or in 2023, you're going to get your school or in 2021. We don't know. But there's no such a thing of having a plan. And I'm so tired of hearing, well, the school committee is not ready to take this on. Or the, the, the uh, administration is not ready to take this on. How do we know when we're not ready? And that's the piece when I was saying, let's build capacity within the school committee to be able to do that and within the school system to be able to do that. There has to be a plan. And right now there isn't a plan. And so we should demand a clear, concise plan and if not, also benchmarks, not benchmarks, I'm sorry, dashboarding. Because our parents also, from what I see and what I've heard, and I've had conversations, there's really, I don't know if you, do you guys, do you guys get like a report of where we at in this process of achieving these things on a regular basis in a way that parents understand it? No. Because I've seen the reports, the reports are very like cumbersome. I've seen them. Can we create something like that for parents so parents have a sense of, you know what, this is where we're going. Or let's say, you know what, we're gonna get the school back next year. Okay, what do we need to do? A, B, and C, all right. What do the parents need to do? What do the school committee needs to do? That's not clear, so I think that's the piece. When I say we're not ready, that's what I mean, because that's what they have been saying. We're not ready, but the turnaround plan, we need a plan, it's been too long. And our school needs to be, we need to regain control back of our school system. But it's gonna take a lot of work, it's gonna take a lot of collaboration, it's gonna take teamwork, and, more than anything, reporting. Reporting, reporting, transparency, so that we can get it done. Um, en español, yo de verdad apoyo el plan de reestructuración. El problema que tiene el plan de reestructuración es que no tiene una, no es un plan conciso que te dice, ok, de aquí a un año, de aquí a dos años, nosotros vamos a tener nuestro sistema escolar para atrás. Ni estas son las tres cosas, cuatro cosas que la escuela, el sistema escolar tiene que hacer, o los profesores tienen que hacer. Estoy cansada de escuchar que el, el comité de escolar no tiene la capacidad para tomar el, 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 la escuela para atrás. Pero sin embargo... Nunca lo vamos a hacer si no estamos creando capacidad, o sea, preparándolos y dándoles las herramientas que ellos necesitan para nosotros entonces poder tomar este, 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 eh, en nuestro sistema para atrás de escolar. No hay un sistema, ni una forma, ni un reporte, ni nada que, lo, que, se le, que regularmente se le da a los padres, que los padres de una manera simple, porque yo he visto los reportes, son bastante complicados. Simple, ¿dónde estamos? ¿Cuándo? Qué, ¿Cuáles son las cosas que hay que hacer? ¿Dónde está mi niño? ¿Qué yo tengo que hacer como padre? ¿Qué tiene que hacer el, el, el cuerpo, de, de, el, el personal del, 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 del sistema escolar para retomar nuestro sistema escolar para atrás? Eso es lo que falta. Hace falta eso. Entonces debiéramos demandar y exigir que eso sí suceda. Y por eso sí yo voy a abogar. Que haga un plan claro y conciso y no de 10 años, en 15 años, para nosotros poderlo tomar para atrás. Pero eso viene con trabajo en colaboración. Así que yo espero que nosotros de verdad tomemos nuestro sistema escolar para atrás y que podamos tener autonomía para nosotros poder tomar las decisiones. Muchísimas gracias. On the other hand, I personally and strongly, firmly believe that the goals that have been set are clear. We have a structure and we have great professionals that are ready to take back the Lawrence Public School System, and that's you. You are ready, and I know that. Our school committee is ready, and I know that. 
My answer is short and simple. Receivership has to go. Yo creo, yo creo que a nosotros ya se nos han presentado las metas para poder tomar el sistema educacional de LOMS. Nosotros tenemos profesionales que están listos y preparados para tomar el sistema de educación pública. Y esos son ustedes y nuestro comité escolar. Mi respuesta es muy clara, concisa y firme. Estamos listos para decirle adiós a el receivership. Closing statement. Can I just say it's like 300 degrees in here and I've got my personal summers now? <laughs> oh my God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, there's no other way we could learn more about what's going on with the school system or what's going on with the paraprofessional or with the parents or anybody else. I think this was really good for me uh, as I don't work closely with the school department yet, not that close. But it was really uh, empowering also for me. Uh, as you know, Lawrence is my home. This is, you know, this is where my family is. This is where I want to make sure that other families uh, thrive. And, and this is where we found opportunity. I want to make sure that other families um, also find opportunity. And to be honest with you, I really, really believe that our community and our parents deserve to live in a community that's clean, that's safe. To live in a house that's affordable, that's safe to be in a school system that provides high quality education, to live in a community that has, yes, to be in a community that has, it's thriving, you know, financially, economically thriving. I, I really firmly believe in that, but I also believe that we need a government that's transparent, that is responsible, and it really listens to the needs and meets the needs of its community. And that happens with conversations like this one and ongoingly, because that's what's important here. I also think that Lawrence, no, I don't think, I believe that Lawrence needs a competent and experienced leader that can get us through the next, you know, get us through this pandemic and to the next thing. Some, someone that you trust will get the job done. I've been getting the job done for 30 years. Different positions, but it's been done. And I think that I have the ability to get us to the next, next step. We need much needed stability uh, I mean, so much has happened. The gas explosion, when we thought that was the worst that could happen, then the pandemic hit. And I have been involved in the response for both, and it has been, it's, it's like a mountain. You don't know when you're going to finish climbing it to get to the other side. So I have proven leadership for over 30 years. As an activist, as a public servant, I've done it both. I've come from the ground and to the point where I'm now within government. I have worked with four administrations. I, I understand what's going on, and I understand um, what needs to be done. I want to make sure that I continue to work for the quality of life that it matters to our community, that things that matter to our community, I want to be able to do that. And I believe that all my experience, my, you know, from grassroots activism to you know, local government to you know, creating you know, social change and changing systems and creating policies, and my vast network of, of partnerships that I have built over the years really gives me that, that extra you know, oomph, like you say, um, to, to really get, uh, take, take hold of this, um, of this uh, mayoral seat and move forward. I think that together we can build a city that creates opportunity, equal access to opportunities and resources for all. An opportunity, and um, sorry, I got distracted with that. <laughs> Get an opportunity for all and that we can all prosper and we can all thrive. Give me that opportunity. Give me that opportunity on September 21st. Vote for me. Vote for me because I have the experience. Vote for me because I've been here for 30 years. Vote for me because I've been involved in so many ways. Vote for me because we'll make history as well. There has never been a Latina mayor in the city or the state, ever. Emily's List just endorsed my campaign. They're national. They don't endorse local um, um, races like this. So I believe that I have the, the passion, the time, because I have my children, I've grown, and the opportunity to move this city forward. And I hope and pray that you on September 21st take advantage and vote for Vilma Martinez Dominguez. Thank you so very much.
Once again, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today to share my vision for the city to answer your questions. I think that this type of forums are extremely important as not just myself, but also Doma shares the vision. And I really wish that the other candidates were here so you could hear from them. Shame on you. Vilma, thank you for showing up. I am a proud father of two beautiful children. I am a proud and happy husband. My beautiful wife, Denise, back there. We live happily in Tower Hill. And I am doing this because I believe that not just my children and my wife, but all the ranchers deserve a city that works for them. In the last eight months as your mayor, you have tested me. And I have proven that I can lead the city in any challenges that it face. I will continue to advocate strongly for our students and for the Lawrence Public Schools because I believe in it. I voted no in question too, by the way. I, think, I voted no in question two. Yeah. And again, I think I'm the only candidate that voted no in question two. Okay, keep that in mind. So with that said, I am proud to be a Lavanshan. I am proud to be serving. I have been given the opportunity to serve as many in the last few months, and I wish to be able to be given the opportunity to serve for a full term of four years. Quality of life is a priority. Student engagement is a priority. Public safety is a priority. We are going to continue to work on it together. Una vez más, agradezco la oportunidad para poder venir ante ustedes a presentar mi visión junto con la, la candidata Vilma. Agradezco que ella estuvo aquí presente para compartir con ustedes también su visión. Y es muy desafortunado que los otros candidatos no quisieron participar en este tipo de foro. Me entristece eso que ellos no compartan su visión con la ciudad. Ahora, quiero también decirle que soy un papá muy orgulloso de dos hermosos hijos, Amir y Amaya, un esposo orgulloso de mi esposa, muy feliz, quienes juntos vivimos en el vecindario de Tower Hill, aquí en la ciudad de Lones, nuestra ciudad. Yo estoy haciendo esto, correr para alcalde por un término completo, por ellos y por todos nuestros residentes, porque firmemente creo que merecemos una ciudad que trabaje para ustedes, una ciudad que les represente con honra, con honor, con transparencia, una ciudad para todos los lorencianos. Yo apoyo que tengamos mejor calidad de vida, que tengamos oportunidades para nuestros jóvenes y estudiantes, el apoyo incondicional a lo que es nuestro sistema educacional público de Lourdes, asegurar de que tengamos seguridad pública. Todas estas son prioridades para mí, son cosas que hemos estado haciendo. En estos últimos ocho meses, Ustedes me han puesto a la prueba y han comprobado de que tengo el liderazgo suficiente para enfrentar cualquier dificultad que se me presente como su alcalde. Por eso, con mucha humildad y respeto, les pido su voto el 21 de septiembre. I humbly and respectfully ask for your vote on September 21st. Thank you. Muchas gracias. God bless you.